So, you know, this is Vlad TV, so there's certain questions that we have to ask. Uh, <laughs> and you already know where this is going. Man. You, you and Jay Huss. Now, first of all, I'm just going to say that on a hip-hop level, uh, I think this is dope because ultimately you guys both made diss records towards each other. I felt these were all, all quality records. You know, I, I listened to both of them and, and it's, it's dope. But initially, where did the whole rival, rivalry with you and Jay Huss start from? My brother. <laughs> uh, nah, man. That's, 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 right. that's, on a, that's on another side, man. You know, I don't okay. really like to... So it started on some street shit before, beforehand. We'll just say that. But initially, Jay Huss started the whole thing. He did the first disc record towards you. Uh, he did uh, De La Jour. Mm. Okay. And then in the lyrics was little Kojo scared, Kojo stressing, Kojo run off, left his blessing, left his bride, left his brethren, Kojo lying. Time for confessions, Kojo what, Kojo who, Kojo ooh, I make more funds than you. But when you initially heard that, how'd you feel? Well, I'm in my element, man. It's nothing. But you responded right away. What'd you say? You responded to the record. You did uh, Ariba. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then uh, in the lyrics you said, I don't want to hear no, no stutter, I catch no slipping like black butter, then I cut him up with a black cutter, and I leave him Stratford gutter. No lie, the 45 will make your chest decline, and if you want to ride, then come ride, and I'm going to hit you up, yes, no lie, no lie, no lie. Now, no lie is, uh, is Jay Huss's record, and you know, you talk about Stratford and so forth, Jay Huss's area. You went, you went right at him. This is, there, is no, there is no kind of gray area here. <laughs> Go ahead, man. How was the response to, to your record? It was playing in every club, man. Well, because th these were both like very musical kind of diss records. Like, both of you guys are singing on both of your records. So it, it, it's kind of a little bit different than what I've seen in, in typical hip-hop beef records. Mm. Is there anything more that, that came with this? Is this whole thing kind of squashed, or is it still going? All right, let's put it like this. Is there any way that this could be worked out? That y'all could, could get together, work it out, do some music together? Because honestly, I'm fans of both of y'all. That's good, man, but I'm in my own lane, man. I'm doing my own thing. I'm focused on my own shit. Like, I'm not really focused on other people, you know? Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. When you look back on it, do you feel in retrospect you needed to respond or do you think you could have just left it alone and just walked away from it? Well, <clears throat> to be honest, like, I don't know, man. Like, I just did it because people wanted it kind of thing. I mean, they asked for it, so I just gave it and... That was it, man. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times social media will, will hype you up to do shit like this. You know, like me personally, people diss me all the time. I never respond. Mm. And, you know, I get all the tweets and the Facebook messages and everything, and I'm like, fuck it. I hear that, man. Okay, so you don't call your stuff Afro beat, you call it Afro swing. Yeah. Uh, what does that mean? Well,. <sighs> Obviously, my tunes that like, they got the the Afro element, that African element. That's the Afro, and the swing it swings from genre to genre, like dancehall, rap, 
a new Jack Swing. You know what I mean? Really? I mean, because New Jack Swing, that's a 90s American thing. Mm -hmm. Teddy Riley and them. Yeah. Well, so you're saying that you actually incorporate that into what you do? Yeah, the melodies, some of the melodies. You know what I mean? Like, bro, like people like Bobby Brown and, you know, like people like Guy, for in fact, they come with the melodies strong, you know what I mean? So that, that, that plays a part as well. Okay, so when you look at Afro beat, Afro swing, it seems like now you're starting to see more of a worldwide genre uh, kind of focus on it. Yeah, yeah. See what I'm saying? I feel like like Drake, Drake incorporated some of it. Yeah, he did. Right. I mean, he not, wait. What was the what was the song that he? It was essentially an Afro beat song that he he ended up redoing. Um, uh, Wiz Kids, I think. Yeah. I'm the man to say it. I'm not Nigerian, so I'm not even gonna attempt to say the name. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. So and then you know I think Wale incorporated some Afrobeat stuff in his new album. I think so. How do you feel about about where Afrobeat is sort of going and kind of getting looked at worldwide? It's good. That's that's a, that's that's a that's an improvement from where it started. You know what I mean and. Uh, it's a good feeling that it's expanding, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I think you're, you're starting to get more more visibility of the UK music scene, just period. Because if you look at Drake's last album, Giggs showed up on two songs. Yeah. Skepter basically had his own song on the album. Yeah. Well, what was the reaction in the UK when, when Drake's album dropped and it had so much of a UK inter influence? Because then there was other UK artists kind of scattered all around the album too. Yeah, it was mad, you know. It was mad that my people, like, they were listening to it. And um, when he came with the, the London vibe, it was like, yeah, you know, the scene's going somewhere. You know what I mean? Especially internationally as well. Like. Right. Yeah, man. I mean, cause you, have you ever been to the US? No. Okay. No. Because, I mean, you do see, I think Skepter just did some shows in the U.S., but you don't see a lot of U.K. artists going to the U.S. and performing. Mm. Yeah, that's true. I mean, what do you think it'll take for a U.K. artist to really blow up in the U.S., like the way Drake, you know, Canadian artists blew up in the U.S.? I don't know, man. I don't know. It's, it, I don't know, man. I mean, do you think that's a focus for you guys, or do you think y'all don't really give a shit because the UK is so supportive of what you're doing? Uh, I think everybody, everybody's really doing their own thing, man. That's what I think. That's why, I me, mean, I don't really care about that, man. I just care about me, myself, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, because I think that YouTube kind of changed the playing field, because before before YouTube, and you know, you could say Spotify and so forth, mm. like whatever the radio played became what everyone listened to. You know, what I mean, there was always an underground scene. You know, there always you know will be an underground scene. There always was an underground scene, but yeah. it's like people could now you know getting a million people to listen to a song. 20 years ago was impossible if you weren't on the radio. Yeah. Whereas now you have how many songs with over a million plays? <laughs> a few. Quite right. A few. Without, without a ton of radio plays, what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, probably that too. Right. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Right. But and but the radio sort of picked it up after the YouTube numbers started picking. Yeah, up. 